Hi, and welcome to my video series of Biotechniques Explained in 5 Minutes, where I explain the concept of biology in less than 5 minutes or so. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button. Why are you waiting for? Now, please leave some comments at the end of this video. This would keep me motivated to make more videos like this. In this installment, we'll be learning about cDNA libraries. So, a cDNA library is a combination of all cloned cDNA fragments, which is comprising of the transcriptum of the cell at a given point of time under a given condition. So, if we consider a cell, it would have a lot of DNA, and at a point of time, all of these DNA won't be expressing, right? Few of these DNA would express, I mean, the transcription would happen from few of these DNA, and that would give rise to the transcriptome of the cell at that point of time. So in short, cDNA library represents a pool of mRNA at a given point of time under a certain condition. A same cell would have different transcription profile under two different conditions and a different time point, right? So a cell, different type of cells be it a neuron, be it an epithelial cell, be it a muscular cell, it would have different kind of transcriptomes because different kind of genes are expressed in these tissues which would give rise to the changes, right? So we, if we compare cDNA library to a genomic DNA library, then a genomic DNA would contain all the sequence which comprises both exon and introns of a gene. Whereas the cDNA libraries could not have any introns because the cDNA library is constructed from the mRNA and it converted to cDNA. So it would only have sequence information about exons, the expressing part, right? Now, genomic DNA library would contain representation of the all genes of that particular cell. Let's say that cell has 26,000 genes. So all of these information about the all these 26,000 genes would be encompassed in this genomic DNA library. But all these 26,000 genes do not express under same condition and same time point. So cDNA library would be a small subset of the genomic DNA library. It would have information about few genes that are expressed at that particular time point or at that particular condition. So these are the defining differences between the a genomic DNA and cDNA library. Now let's look at how we can prepare a cDNA library. So first step is imagine you have your cell of interest. So let's say you want to extract the cDNA library of this common epithelial cell. Now you take a cell, a popul a cell population and you have to lyse the cell to extract it R its RNA, right? After that, the RNA that we have extracted, we would be converting it into complementary DNA with particular reaction conditions, which I won't be discussing in this particular video, but I have a separate video on that. Now, these cDNA would be cloned inside specific expression vectors. And now we can use these expression vectors, which con contains specific fragments of the cDNA of that particular cell, and we can transform that using normal heat shock method. We can combine it with the competent cell and then we can perform the heat shock where by changing in subtle change in temperature would allow the incorporation of those cDNA containing plasmid into the competent cell. After that, we can plate those competent cells on a particular plate with particular antibiotic resistance which would allow us the selection. So after a point of time, we would start seeing colonies in the plate where we have transformed our bacteria, right? And expected that these bacteria, th this bacterial plate, which, which would have all the representation of the transcriptum in format of cDNA. Now the question comes, okay, we know it would possibly has all the cDNAs, from the cells that we want from the cell that we wanted it to be extracted but how would i know it is present so we need a screening method so how do we screen the cdna library so next couple of minutes let's talk about how we can screen the cdna library 
So first step first is the replica plating. So we have to put a nitrocellulose membrane or a nylon membrane and the imprint of the colonies would come on to that membrane. Now we know which gene we are looking for. So we can use a radio level probe or any kind of leveled probe and put that on the membrane and allow it for hybridization. So when the hybridization is done and we blot I and mean, develop this particular nylon membrane under autoradiograph, so we can see a particular colony is present. So that most likely to have our gene of interest. So now we can go back to our replica plate and select that particular colony, grow that particular colony in bulk and do whatever we like to do with our gene of interest, right? So in this way, we can screen our cDNA colony. But there is certain problem with making cDNA libraries in bacteria. The alternative is to make the cDNA library in lambda fudge based cloning vectors. If you don't know about lambda fudge based cloning vectors, I have a separate video on lambda fudge based cloning vectors. So you can check that out first. Now there are dedicated lambda fudge insertion vectors which are used to produce cDNA libraries. There are lambda GT10 and lambda GT11 series. The biggest advantage of these uh, lambda vectors is they have bigger carrying capacity because all the genes are not small, right? So some genes are pretty big. So it gives us more flexibility in terms of the carrying capacity. And you can also have a LAGZ reporter based easy screening system in this lambda GT11 series uh, advanced lambda phage based vectors, so which would give us advantage. And these days we have lambda ZAP series, which are even bigger carrying capacity in terms of carrying capacity they are like huge so they can carry as big as like 10 kb fragments and relatively it is easy to screen these lambda zap uh, vectors in terms of cdna library so these days people prefer lambda fudge based cloning system over bacterial cloning system i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you